So this is not a clickbaity title. Just two months ago, I did a video on ChatGTP3 and there were tons of YouTubers saying how they use it for coding. And I thought it was BS because there were examples that were used in more basic HTML and REST API code snippets. And I couldn't enter a lot of code. And I don't know, I thought it was for mid or senior level engineers. I thought it was a waste of time. Well, now with GTP4, this is quickly changing my mind. Now, for those of you who don't know me, I'm Andre, and I have seven years of programming experience where basically I help consult and freelance for VC-backed startups, as well as Fortune 500 companies. Now, I'm honestly impressed with GTP4, and I'm gonna break down this video into the following sections. So first, we're gonna do quick coding use cases of how I'm using GTP4 today, then I'm going to do an overview of how other companies like Duolingo, Khan Academy, and others are using GTP4. And thirdly, if you're a solo entrepreneur or freelancer or content creator, we'll talk about use cases that save us time and make us more money. So let's get into it. So one of my least favorite things to do in coding is writing tests. And oftentimes, basically when clients have very tight deadlines, and I just don't have the time to have the test coverage that I want for my code. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hand off this task to GPT-4. Now the difference between version 3.5 and 4 is the amount of text it is able to ingest and output. So for instance, ChatGTP, which is the 3.5 version, is able to output 3,000 words, while GPT-4 can output 25,000 words, which is quite impressive. Imagine next two to three years, it's gonna to continue to get a lot better. So in order to make this engaging, I've created uh, basically a prompt that has a lot of steps in it, and we will see how GPT-4 basically is, deals with it. So here I'm basically a paying member and I've already put GPT-4 and then there's other legacy versions as well. So let's get into it. So um, as it's writing this out, I'm going to explain the prompt a little bit to you. Uh, so what I'm asking you to do is to write a Solidity smart contract for efficiently doing payouts so that uh, recipients defined by the owner of the contract can basically receive payments. The payout recipients can either retrieve their payout via pull method or the owner can push the payments to them. And then also asked um, to add a specific method for funding and um, asked for test coverage and also asked for um, front end with Next.js and TypeScript. So there's a lot of going, stuff going on here. And as it's typing it out, I'm basically gonna explain a few things. So first we have um, one of the caveats with uh, any of these open AI technologies, uh, specifically ChatGTP or GPT-4, is that it, it only has, it uses data up until September of 2021. So um, this Solidity version, which is basically how you write smart contracts on Ethereum, this version is a little older. Um, I think today we're using version 0.8.19, but overall the code itself is still very good. So I'm gonna look at, um, yeah, I think it, it's, it's impressive that it was able to write this out. Um, and yeah. Another small comment. Yeah, I think I think it's pretty good. So I have to think of the right continue here. So now I think it's gonna write the test suite for us. And while we do that, anything else? I mean, overall, I think it's very impressive that it's able to do this. Right now it's gonna do uh, the testing for us and then we're gonna do the front end. So you can just imagine uh, when a client comes to me, um, I can whip this out in minutes instead of hours of writing this code out and just basically make, make a few small adjustments. Now, no, another thing here, again, it's using a slightly ver older version of hard hat waffle. Today would be using something a little bit different, um, but you know, it, it is writing um, the tests out, which is my least favorite part. Um, and, um, and yeah, it's quite impressive. Like uh, it just keeps on going. And then sometimes I have to keep uh, to keep it going. I have to write continue and it's gonna uh, I just do whatever I ask it to do. Now I've played with this uh, for many hours over the weekend. So this is just one prompt that encapsulates basically uh, smart contract programming, front end and testing as well. And now it's starting to do the front end with Next.js and TypeScript. Um, again, it's pretty good with configs, commands, it tells us to install stuff, and now it's gonna write the front end. Um, 
So um, overall, this is uh, very impressive. You can just imagine in a year or two how much better it's going to get. Um, so yeah. So to quickly summarize, let's go over what GPT-4 wrote. So they basically created an admin page. It created um, a recipient page. It created, um, this is uh, the way to interact with the contract. It told us what packages to install, some tests, some basic testing, some hard hat configs, um, and the smart contract. So overall, uh, very impressive. Uh, let's continue on with the video. So this is quite impressive. You can imagine that a client will reach out to me and they basically want to quickly prototype something and test something. And this would save me basically hours of prototyping. Now me and many other engineers are already using GitHub Copilot to basically complete our lines of code and making us more efficient. Now Copilot is another OpenAI and Microsoft product. So you can imagine in two to three years, there'll be GPT-5 and six, and we'll have basically we'll have access to up-to-date documentation on the latest packages. And also these models will have access to our code bases. So we'll have more context within day-to-day -day code, see our patterns, and it'll be basically be able to provide better responses. I imagine in the not too distant future, I'll create a PR on GitHub and then basically explain exactly what feature I want, what word bug I want to be fixed, and then GPT-5 or 6 will write whatever features or tests or fix a bug. And I'll basically look at the PR and the code it just generated, and I'll make a few adjustments and I'll probably just merge the PR. Now this will make engineering teams more efficient and have the ability to accomplish more with less headcount. It's just kind of a matter of time at this point, right? Now will be there less engineering jobs? Maybe, maybe it'll just make us more efficient. Now probably a combination of both if I had to really think about it. Time will tell, right? Now let's take a look at companies that are using ChatGPT4 already. Now the main companies that I've found that are using the latest tech are Stripe, Morgan Stanley, Khan Academy, Duolingo, Salesforce, Microsoft, and so on. Now I'm gonna quickly go through these. Now Duolingo has added an assistant for clarifying concepts in foreign languages to you. Stripe uses it to answer users' questions regarding technical documentation. Khan Academy uses GPT-4 as a personal tutor to give tips and support for students. Now Microsoft can do a whole bunch of things from summarizing meeting notes to creating complex charts based on what it thinks you might want, based on your emails, spreadsheets, and so on. But let's talk about the use cases for entrepreneurs, freelancers. Now this isn't some BS video where I'm gonna tell you that you can become a billionaire by using OpenAI API that every other person in the world can also use, right? <laughs> Having said that, you can improve your workflow by a lot. Now I spoke to a friend that has millions of subscribers on YouTube, for example, and he said that he uses ChatGTP to help him write scripts for his TikTok videos. Another entrepreneur friend connected basically an integration called Zapier with his email and is using ChatGTP to quickly create more dynamic email responses, asking his potential clients for specific information that saves him about three hours a day, which is quite impressive. So these are not pie in the sky scenarios anymore. Now freelancers and small startups cannot use the fully customizable tech yet like Duolingo or Khan Academy are using, but I'm sure it'll be coming soon. Now to tailor GPT-4 to our specific needs, we can also fine tune this model. Now looking at the fine tuning uh, documentation, there's only support for GPT-3, which are basically models from two versions ago. Now big companies like Stripe and Khan Academy have access to GPT-4 fine tuning today, and I assume that in the near future, it's also gonna be available to the public. Now, whatever you do, just check out the API documentation and see it, if it helps with your needs. Now, just imagine you have a real estate or a design business and the fine-tuned ChatGTP5 can write drafts and answer a lot of client emails that save you hours per day. Now, it could also take meeting notes and provide dozens of mock-up designs in seconds and so the possibilities to make us more efficient and productive are endless. Now, as an engineer manager, this will make my team way more efficient with less programmers on my team. It could also probably do like crazy things, just like basic taxes and so on. And I just imagine it will just remove a bunch of boring work for us and enable us to do more things. And it's kind of both exciting and scary at the same time. So to summarize the video, I'll be exploring the API more and talking with more people that are using this technology to improve the workflow on a daily basis. 
And uh, basically I'll document it here. So look out for more videos. Definitely check out the ChatGTP API and GPT-4 API as well. Now, if you have any issues, comments, or suggestions, feel free to leave a comment. Now we're all here to learn together about emerging tech. So thank you for watching and have a great day. See ya.